Do you want to learn how to transfer a domain to AWS? Then stick around and find out how. I'm Thomas with Brain Trust Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack development, please consider subscribing below. I wanted to take a second to apologize. I typically try to put out one video per week and I've kept on that schedule for several months now, up until lately. It's been five, maybe six weeks since I put out a video. So what happened? Well, we had a big change in our family. My wife, uh, a little over three weeks ago, gave birth to our son, Connor. So uh, as you can imagine, life's been a little bit crazy around here, uh, trying to figure out sleep schedules and learning a lot on the fly. Um, uh, so while I'm gonna try to get back to the, the every week schedule, I think it's gonna take a little bit of time for things to settle down and, and for me to get back into that routine. So I, I hope you can have a little patience with me during that time and I'll just push out content as frequently as I can, but keep the requests coming, keep the questions coming, and at some point I, I'm sure that I can uh, begin to catch up. In this tutorial, we're gonna walk through how to transfer a domain from Gandhi.net over to AWS Route 53. I've covered this topic previously, showing how to transfer a domain from GoDaddy to Route 53, uh, so I thought it might be nice to showcase a different platform, in this case, Gandhi.net, uh, so that you can start to see some of the subtle similarities and differences between different platforms when performing the same action. In this case, we're transferring a domain out. From personal experience, I think that there's some benefit to learning how to perform the same task across several different platforms. I think the exposure to the different platforms while knowing that you have the same end goal in mind helps you to easily build a mental framework of how to accomplish that task. For me personally, I I feel as though as I continue to gain exposure to more and more platforms, it seems to make them easier and easier to pick up along the way, if that makes sense. So with that being said, let's get into the tutorial to learn how to transfer a domain to AWS Route 53. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is log into the domain registrar for the domain that you want to transfer into AWS Route 53. So in our case, that's Gandhi.net. Once we're logged into the platform, we're gonna go ahead and click the domains button on the left. While the specifics of this process may be subtly different from registrar to registrar, the basic concepts will be available on any platform. Uh, so you should be able to follow along, but just let me know in the comments if you have questions on your specific platform and I'll see if there's ways I can help. So here from the list of domains, we're gonna go ahead and select the domain we wish to transfer. In this case, it's the ytplanner.com. Next on the far right, you can see the transfer out button. We're gonna go ahead and click that now. Here on the transfer out page, you can see that the transfer lock is enabled. This is a pretty common feature for most registrar platforms, uh, and it's just a safety measure for you. So since we are in fact going to be transferring this domain to Amazon, we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. This must be turned off if that feature is available within your platform or you will not be able to make the transfer. Now that our transfer lock is disabled, you can see this next block here is our transfer authorization code. We're gonna go ahead and click the copy button and then we're gonna switch over to our ADBS Route 53 console. Here you can see we're logged into Amazon and we've navigated to the Route 53 dashboard. Next, down in the center of the screen, we're gonna click transfer your existing domains. Here you have the opportunity to enter a single domain transfer and even though we will be just transferring a single domain, I'm gonna go ahead and click multiple domains so I can cover that aspect as well. This is a really nice feature if you're transferring several domains, say you want to consolidate from one registrar to another, uh, this is a really nice feature to use. And you can see the format here is domain comma authorization code. One thing to note here, occasionally your authorization code could contain a comma, at which point you'd have to either regenerate if the platform allows you to do so until you get an authorization code without a comma, or you'll have to call into the support and request the specific needs of the authorization code for the platform that you'll be importing into. So now let's go ahead and enter our domain, yt-planner.com, then we're gonna hit a comma, and then we're gonna paste in the authorization code that we just copied from Gandhi. Next, we'll click continue. Here you can see that Route 53 has determined the domain to be transferable. 
If you see that your domain is not transferable, two things typically cause that type of issue. One, you've forgotten to turn off the transfer lock, and two, AWS does not support the top-level domain extension. In our case, this is a .com domain, so that's not a problem here. But if you're using some new uh, obscure top-level domain extension or maybe a, a smaller country domain extension, that may not be supported by Route 53. Now here at the bottom, we're going to click the button, Add Transferable Domains to Cart, and then click Continue. We're gonna scroll down, and you just wanna make sure that the privacy protection is set to Enable. It's just gonna hide some of your personal details. Then click Continue. On this final screen, the only other items to note would be to ensure that your registrar administrative and technical contact details are correct. Next, you wanna skim down to the renewal section. I typically leave my domains on auto renewal, so I don't have to specifically remember to go in and renew them. Lastly, we're gonna go ahead and check the agree to the terms and conditions, and then click complete order. Here you can see we still need to authorize the transfer. We've completed all the steps in the platform that we need to, uh, but here Amazon tells us they're going to send us either one or three emails, depending on if we've changed our email address. So now we can click go to domains. As you can see, our domain is sitting in the transfer in progress. And you can always find this under the domains pending request section. We're just gonna have to wait for that transfer authorization email to come through. This typically just contains a link that we're gonna have to click to authorize the transfer. This is just another measure of security to ensure that the email address associated with that domain is notified of this transfer and actually intends to make the transfer. Since this is our intent and that is our email address, this won't be a problem. We're just gonna have to wait for it to come through so we can click the link. Here we have the email from Gandhi. You can see about halfway down, we've got the link that we need to click to approve the transfer. So we're gonna go ahead and click that now. Here you have the option to either authorize or prevent the transfer. We're obviously wanting to authorize in this case. We need to go back over to Gandhi and grab the authorization code from the domain. We're gonna go ahead and copy that and then click back in the confirmation, paste the code and click validate. As you can see, the transfer request has been approved. So now we just need to wait for that approval to push to route 53. After refreshing my pending domain requests, you can see that that's empty. So I suspect that our domain has finished transferring and is now in the register domain section. So if I click in there and search for the domain, you can see that it has successfully transferred um, the expiration date that we have auto renew and transfer lock turned on. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe the video. Please let me know if you have any requests for video tutorials in the future. My whole goal is to lower the barrier to entry for those attempting to learn how to do web development and manage infrastructure. So anytime that somebody can put a request out and I can create a video to, to solve their problem or their question, I'm happy to do so. With that, I'll catch you in the next tutorial.